All right, in the last video, we played with color holds, which is on top of our line art, right? You can do it on just your spot illustration. Here, I'm using it on the poster because I figure if we make like a poster we like, then I can always strip back the, the background and just have it as a spot illustration with text, take off the text, have it just as a spot illustration. I can have all of that from the same file because we're at a pretty high resolution being at least 11 by 14 at 350. Mine's 18 by 23, so pretty big. I need to crop it down a little bit more because I changed my border. But uh, I overdid the little stars, you know, little stars everywhere. And then I kind of varied their size and their rotation so they didn't look too copy pasted. Now I like them on the claws it helps separate the feet from the, the text. I like them wherever they, they cover up something that I, I don't like. Like here, that overlap of the, uh, the text and my line art. I like them when they show shine, like on the armor. Right there, I think is very effective right there. And then here, I just thought I needed some brightness on the Manticore's face. But it doesn't make sense that those are on top of the line art, right? Because fur doesn't gleam like that. So I want to find both of these. Let's see. It's that one and this one. Good. I'm going to merge them. By merging them, it's going to take all those layer styles and rasterize them together. And then I'm going to move that so I can keep an eye on it. I'm going to color it. I'm going to move it down through my layers until it's underneath all these other color holds, all these olives on top and behind the line art, right? Like that. And so now it's just like a faint gleam. And because it's rasterized, I can just erase away from it. And now this becomes what's called a touch-up to the digital coloring. Because remember, in full spectrum digital coloring, we remind ourselves with our slides here, and this handout's available for you under links. So I just take the most basic thing, the lemon, and push it through the full digital coloring process, right? Vector line art, flat color, duotone hard edge, duotone soft edge, full spectrum. You'll see the purple and the green that's now in the yellow. And then color holds, which we just learned, right? Replacing that black, because if you're going to use full spectrum color, the black line feels a little heavy. So replacing that with a color. And then doing all of that, now we might need to play with some variations, like add some texture. Color holds opens up like everything we can do. So now underneath our line art, on this layer, which I'll call touch-ups, I'm going to use a paintbrush. Not an eraser, a paintbrush. <laughs> and I'm going to use settings on that paintbrush just to do little variations, right? Little touch-ups to the color. So if I think there needs to be a little bit of brightness on this edge, I'll hold down Option to Steal. It can even just be white. And then I'll kind of paint it in. So it has everything to do with the kind of brush settings you use. So because I'm trying to work with this dissolve texture I've built, I'm going to use a different brush than the standard brushes. Remember, we've when we've used the brush for digital inking, for instance, we just use the hard round pressure size brush. That looks like this. If we use it at 100% opacity, 100% flow. Because this is underneath my dissolve. If I want it softer edged, I can take it down. Gives me a lot of control. If I want to decrease the flow that will lessen the interior of it as well as the exterior edge. And 
And I can take the opacity down and that will lessen all of its impact because these are just little touch-ups. And I can choose colors to paint with or I can just use white. Wherever I think there needs to be a little bit extra kind of soft edged tint. And you can really get lost in this. And so I also like to use some custom brushes sometimes to speed it up. So within Photoshop 2024, 2023, I think it started with maybe 2020. Photo Adobe has partnered with a graphic designer who makes brushes and builds some of these brushes in. Sometimes when you do touch up, you'll notice things you didn't notice, like slips in your color. And then you can use the touch up layer to correct them. You know, that, that red tip there. Get some of this orange and with full spectrum color, put some of that orange just directly into the main color. Ooh, the pun there, main and primary. But you want to do this behind your line art so you're not accidentally painting over the top of your line art. You want your line art to stay clean. Only color holds go on top of your line art. You can even use touch-ups for really, really refined work. Like right here, if I don't like that little bump, I can use my lasso and then I can just paint it with black. Using a brush at full opacity and full flow. Or I can even just say edit fill with black. Right, and kind of help those transitions. Yeah, that's why, because this layer above it is getting in the way. So I'm going to clean that up. Now, just like I can do light touch ups like I'm doing, you can also do dark touch ups. And then you can do dodge and burn on your touch-ups. You just have so many options right, to make it a little bit stronger. Something you're excited to print and hang on your wall to remember this monster forever. So to make this more reflective, I might need to touch up with a core shadow. You know, something darker. Running through it. So it looks more metallic and more dangerous. Maybe I want a little duotone shadow underneath on here. Maybe not. <laughs> So full spectrum is a slippery slope because if you do it too much, it then starts to make your black line art look a little redundant. So I just do a few touch-ups, but then I'll also use dodge and burn on them. So if I want to darken them, I can burn them down a little bit. If I want to lighten them, I can dodge them. Just on the touch-up layer. So, you can see that in the main. And then I can also lessen their opacity. So they're not quite as strong. Which can be helpful as well. Now the reason everything is looking broken up is because on top of them, this is what my touch-ups actually look like. Pretty strong. On top of it is a dissolve layer which is a duplicate of my colors, but on a lower opacity set to dissolve. 
And I really like that because it gives you that kind of construction paper texture. It helps print it a little bit better because printing is different than seeing it in pure light on the computer screen. All right. The last thing you'll see on this handout is adding an offset. And that is so that it works on any background. So I've already added that. I have a white stroke around it that helps it pop out on this background and would help it pop out on other backgrounds. All right, so if I save my work, remember I can try out these different kinds of backgrounds. And my character always pops out. I have an offset on my text as well. I'm just seeing how all those glows kind of work on different kinds of backgrounds. And these are all the different layers that created my backgrounds. And I tend to overdo it. Simplicity can sometimes be best. And then, of course, you can use blending modes. Now I've kind of opted for the red text rather than the blue text. So I'm thinking a cooler background might be nice. Yeah, the dark is pretty nice. But then I can also play with direct adjustments. So if I play with hue saturation, I rasterize it. I can take out some of that intensity of the color and still keep the texture and play with the, the hue. And play with how light or dark it is. Right. I think about right there is nicely balanced. And then the last thing, if you want a little edge around it, remember we created these borders, you know, just white shapes. But you can create an edge on that border just by giving it an offset, giving it a stroke. So I've done that here, and then I can change that stroke. Let's make it something a little bit brighter and complementary right at the edge, maybe an orange. So you see that? Ah. <laughs> yeah, I like that. And that will bring out some of the warmth. Just like when you mat a picture, sometimes you'll do double mats and you'll do like a little color uh, lip on it. You can play with that kind of effect on your border as well. All right, now I'm going to crop it because it's a little uneven. I'm going to crop it fairly close. I was doing half an inch before. And then I always leave a little bit more space on the bottom than the other three edges. And if you make kind of a print edition to sell, that gives you a nice space to sign it and number it if it's a limited print edition. And now let me just see, because I have a lot of color holds. I have layers I don't need. I can clean those up. But everything from here until... My line art is all a color hold. I put those all into a folder so I can turn them on and off. So those are all my stars. And now I'm going to do what's called merge the group, which turns it all into one rasterized layer. <laughs> 